really, I don't, you know, homelessness in Denver, I mean. You know, it just, uh, it just doesn't make sense. I mean, they're trying to make it in this, uh, in this country. It just doesn't work out for them for some weird reason. So I, th I think, you know, if you're looking at causes, I mean, I think, the, you know, the fundamental cause is poverty. Denver, Colorado, a Midwestern city that meets the Rockies. It boasts a swelling population and more quietly is home to a fair share of transients. As tends to happen when people congregate, where once there was a vast ancient prairie, there is now urban sprawl, towering buildings, and poverty. Like many American cities, with their odd tendency for suburbanization, those who have no home go where the few call home, downtown. For this investigation, I chose Denver's downtown. Denver may not be so different from many American cities with a homeless population. In the shadow of Mount Evans, 2,552,195 people make their home. Denver is where I have friends, familiarity, and most importantly, an interest in documenting a life that so many of us are inclined to ignore. Yeah. You know, some people tend to like demonize and just criticize homeless people for doing simple things like talking to themselves or acting a little funny. But I mean, in all reality, when you don't, when you're in a situation like that without a home or people to talk to so frequently, you start to have to talk to yourself. And it's, you know, kind of awful that we look down on someone for getting a little nutty when everybody, in all reality, would just become that state of being. people have attempted to try to put this on mental illness and alcoholism, drug addiction, those kinds of things. Um, and I think that <clears throat> mental illness and alcoholism, I think the homeless population that probably have greater proportions of the population that, you know, that are afflicted with that. I doubt that that's causing their homelessness. I mean, I know a lot of drug addicted and mentally ill people who are well to do and they don't wind up on the streets. And so most people who wind up on the streets are people who have exhausted their resources. There's a lot of homeless people in Denver and think that just because they live on the streets, there's either drug addicts or just psychotic or deranged or something like that. But you know, a lot of people are just, they're just everyday people. They just missed out on a paycheck. There are people without homes all over the all over the globe, and I mean, we're no different from anybody else. It's just just a part of life. You know, I try and help out whenever I can. Give them a quarter. Give some ladies some quarters to make a call on a payphone the other day at McDonald's. You know, she was upset. What can you do? Just help them out when you can. Talk to them when you can't. That's what I think. Uh, where are you originally from? Indiana. Indiana? But how'd you end up in Denver? Uh, after I got divorced, I lost all my shit. I was in Vietnam for four years. Got out of Vietnam, got married. Like I said, I got divorced after 13 years. Basically lost everything, and I lost all incentive. That's why I'm out here. You've done a lot of hitchhiking? Yeah. Where have you hitched to? Well, the first place I ever hitchhiked to was Houston, Texas. I was like 13 years old. Ran away from home. Had a state trooper pick me up. Got me a hotel room, bought me lunch, and gave me a $20 bill. Well, what would you say is the hardest part about living like here, you know, just not necessarily having much of shelter, just 
the weather and trying to keep people from stealing our shit. Do you get ever guys ever get anybody down here that tries to mess with you? Oh well, yeah, every now and then we have to put them in their place. Denver Voice is a newspaper on homelessness and poverty, not only in Colorado, but around the world. We get stories from everywhere, including some of the vendors. So. And you and you just said, what did you say, and you're the number one vendor? I'm the vendor of the month. What happens is we buy the paper for a quarter, mm -hmm. and whatever we get, we keep. And like me, I'm using it for a hotel room so I don't freeze to death. Very good. for our Salvation Army uh, in, uh, in Minneapolis for two years, two or three years, uh, running transitional housing. So the, the point was to try to find places from shelters to kind of a group home kind of living situation that was, you know, allowed people to save money, allowed people to have an address, allowed people to have a normal residence um, where they could come and go as they please. I found a place in Denver's Highlands neighborhood that was very similar to the transitional housing Dr. Crest described to me. The Lennox is an old boarding house converted into an excellent refuge from life on the streets. Here we have 55 residents, and we're usually always full. We usually always have 55 residents. The people that live here are receiving care, mm -hmm. medication, they provide their housing. They have individual rooms. We do their housekeeping, we do their laundry, we provide their meals, provide recreation, um, assistance with hygiene, lots of one-on-one -on -one conversations. If they need to talk, we're available to them at any time. We know that we're basically their family. We're the people that they depend on. Most of them don't have outside family, so they depend on us for everything. We're their caregivers. It's mostly state funded through Medicaid. Um, the clients pay a portion of their own rent from their disability, um, but mostly it's Medicaid funded. What do you look like in my life? Great. What do I do? I go and hang out with my boyfriend. I live a very exciting life. Yeah. I do whatever I want to do. Well, it's 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 a pretty good place to live. I mean, the staff really supports you, and they really they really um treat you really good here. Denver undoubtedly has many more stories hidden in the alleys and avenues of its skyscrapers and industrial parks. However, these people helped me to generate some level of understanding about this traditionally ugly subject. I now know that there is hope, potential, and a very human face hidden among the suspicion, fear, and scorn of our society. You know, the approach that I was advocating was about preventing people from sliding there in the first place. Um, so yes, yeah, so I've been around the issue for to my adult life, really, I guess, in some way, shape, or form. But we cannot hide from the tragedy of the subject. It has been a problem, is currently a problem, and will continue to be a problem. Perhaps the question in all our minds is why. The brutal fact of the matter is that it is there. It exists. And this was my own small attempt to investigate street people and their stories. Look like me when I was that young. <laughs> yeah. I'm uh, 20 years old. Uh, I'm, I'm I'll be 58 ago. next week. Okay. You have a great day. And that's it. That's all I have to say. <laughs>